All right, so let's uh, take a look at uh, how to uh, maintain session uh, on, the, um, on a Node.js server uh, so that uh, if, uh, if someone is, uh, logs in or registers or maintains a profile, uh, you might know, uh, you know, need to know uh, or remember from one request to the other uh, who's the currently logged in uh, user. So, uh, so let's, uh, let's, uh, let, let's use the current uh, sample Node.js application that we have been working so far. Uh, and in there, we're going to have to install a couple of libraries. Uh, we already installed Express, right? That's, we installed it yesterday. We played around with it uh, so you can uh, uh, respond to gets, uh, get requests and handle them on the, on the server side, right? So let's, let's not do that. Um, we're going to install another library called the Express Session uh, Library. And, uh, and this, this library uh, is going to uh, be able to uh, allow us to maintain session to remember things about a request. Remember that uh, HTTP is a stateless protocol, right? Meaning uh, when a server receives a, an HTTP request uh, and then receives another one from someone else, uh, it has no way of, of determining who's who. Okay, as far as the server's concerned, each request is its own uh, self-contained um, uh, um, interaction with someone who has sent, who has, uh, sent this request, right? Even, even if it comes from the same machine, right? The server doesn't, can't tell that it's still you. Uh, so it makes it very, very inconvenient uh, to, be, uh, to, to establish a conversation. Imagine that every time you establish a conversation, you needed to set up some context, right? Uh, you know, every time you say something, oh, it's still me, and you have to re-identify yourself or, or uh, uh, so, uh, so there's there's no way there's no uh, uh, technique in the in uh, HTTP all by itself uh, to be able to establish a conversation and identify that it's still you. Uh, so the the um, uh, as, as we described it uh, uh, when we talked about HTTP session way back uh, in Java, uh, we said that uh, we can circumvent this uh, this problem by using cookies. Right? They um, uh, early on we. Uh, uh, we, we, we identify the need to be able to remember uh, that it's the same HTTP request from the same person. And the way we, the underlying mechanism is that we provide a cookie, right? How the server used the cookie is, uh, is another issue, right? Uh, what the server uh, does is that for the same cookie, right, what, it, what the server can do for you is that say, it says recognize that it's the same person the same, from the same... Uh, uh, from the same person who who, who just sent the, the request, and it can uh, uh, you know keep keep uh, in memory a um, a data structure, you know uh, keyed off of that cookie, right? So that uh, when it, so you could be able to you know, store the information in there. So your application, right, can now establish a conversation with this one person, right? Uh, and if it came from different machines, from different requests. Each, each machine would have their own sessions, right, from their own cookie, from their own browsers. Uh, anyway, uh, so there's a whole low-level uh, mechanism of using cookies and establishing the data structures and whatnot. Uh, we're not going to use a low-level uh, mechanism. Instead, uh, we're going to use this uh, higher-level uh, API. The ex it's called the express session, meaning it builds, it uses the cookies to maintain uh, these, uh, this information. Uh, but it's based on the Express library that we already installed uh, yesterday. Okay, uh, so let's uh, let's install that. Uh, let's see where 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 were we yesterday? Uh, I believe it was here. Uh, there we go. So we had we had to start it off with this hello.js, correct? Um, I'm going to rename that uh, because it's kind of becoming our server, right? It's becoming our our uh, HTTP server. It's, it's listening for incoming HTTP requests. Yes. So hello.js is kind of a uh, misnomer. So I'm just going to rename it. Right? So I'm um, rename hello.js, and I'll, I'm going to call it server.js because it's it's actually you know representing our little server. Okay. All right, so I rename that, uh, and let's open it up with our uh, uh, with our IDE, and there's our server.js. So it's the one we were playing around with yesterday. Yes. Uh, if you remember, we, cre we, we connected to, to a database, uh, to a local database. We created a user schema. Uh, uh, we created a, mo a, a, mon a mongoose model around it, uh, and then map mapped a, um, uh, a URL to it uh, so that we can retrieve the, uh, the user. Right? This, is, this is what we had yesterday. Yes? 
Uh, so let's uh, let's just stay with this for a little longer, right? And let's uh, let's just let's just play around now with uh, with sessions. How can we remember things from one request to another? All right. So let's do that. Um, uh, let's uh, install the uh, Express session. All right, so that's going to download it, install it locally, and declare it. There it is. It's declared automatically in our package JSON as a dependency. All right, excellent. So let's keep going. Let's. Um, we already did this, right? We uh, we we have the Express library. We instantiated it. Uh, we have a hello world, right? We did that yesterday. Uh, let's uh, let's do a couple more things. Uh, now we just we just installed a new library called the Express Session Library. We're going to load that. Right? We're going to load instantiate it uh, in our in our server. Right, so there's our there's our app, and now there's our session. Uh, so session is going to be the library right, that will allow us to remember things per cookie. Right? If, it's, if it's from you, you'll have your own session. If somebody somebody else with a different cookie, it'll have a different session. Okay. Uh, oops. Uh, we need to configure a couple of things, right? And uh, to configure it, uh, we um, uh, we use uh, Express's uh, use function, right? and the use function allows us to uh, to configure um, uh, Express-based uh, services. In this case, session is going to be a service. Uh, what what it means is that it's uh, it's going to it's going to intercept all our network communication. Okay, right now, uh, already Express is intercepting our communication. Right? Whenever, whenever an HTTP request comes in, what does, what does Express do? Well, eventually it will call our function here. Right? If Express sees API user, what does it do? Well, it intercepts that query. Right? It parses the headers. It parses the body. Uh, it parses the, uh, the timestamp the IP address from where it came from, right? It parses all this communication that is coming from, uh, from, the, from our browser in this particular case, yes? And, bless you, and, uh, and it packages, it creates an object out of that, right? It creates an object out of that, and then conveniently it passes it to us in this callback function that we created here. See that? Right, so Express is already intercepting our communication. Make sense? Uh, what we want to what we want to do is tell Express that uh, not to just do that, do a little more, right? Uh, for instance, uh, what we'd like to be able to do is, uh, hey, you know what? There might be a cookie in there. There might be a cookie in that in that request, right? From from the from the browser. If there's a cookie, right, create a session object alongside. Okay, and make it available to me right, so, so that I can use it. I can put stuff in there so I can remember next time around it's the same cookie, it'll be the same session. Right? Uh, so so the, way, the way we tell Express, hey Express, I know you're busy you know, uh, intercepting all these things. I want to add an additional uh, interception. Right? I, I, want you to, I, I want you to do a couple other things, not, just, not the only things that you're doing. Well, here's this new library. Here's a new library. I just instantiated it, all right? And notify it whenever you see a an incoming request because it wants to do a couple of things too. It wants to look at the cookie. It wants to create a session. It wants to do all these things. Okay. Uh, so that's what, but that's what the app dot use uh, allows us to do. Right? Allows us to add additional. They're called middle tiers. You know, the middle tiers, right? There's there's the uh, you know the, there's a uh, there's the, uh, the UI, right? The, the, the browser, the, uh, the interacting with the user. Uh, and then we have the server in the middle, right, that, uh, that intercepts communications on its way to be stored in the database. Right? So we call that the middle tier, right? And Express is basically a middle tier uh, API that allows us to create all these middle tiers and configure them and whatnot. Yes? Uh, so session is yet another middle tier. It allows us to, uh, to say, hey, uh, uh, intercept communications uh, and you know initialize yourself. Uh, here's another configuration we can configure sessions, right? To um, uh, so that uh, th these cookies, right? If somebody could grab that cookie from us, right? If somebody could uh, could look at intercept our communication and look at the cookie, 
uh, somebody could steal our session. Somebody could grab that session, right, that cookie, and impersonate us, right, and, and make the server believe that it's somebody else, right? Uh, so, uh, so we can configure that the, 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 what, what any, any information that is being passed along uh, in the cookie, right, that to be, to be uh, encrypted, right, make sure that it's encrypted. Right? And what this allows us to do on the, on the server side is to decrypt it, right? to re retrieve the original cookie, right? the original session, so that even if there was any interception of our, of our, of our cookie, uh, it, it would not be, um, it, it would be useless. Uh, all right, so the session is, uh, is, is, uh, is configured. Let's, uh, let's go back here. Uh, all right, so let's create a couple, a couple of, uh, a, a couple of, um, a URL mappings, all right? Um, remember, we played around with one of them yesterday, this one, API user, yes? Let's play around with a couple more. All right, so let's be, let me grab one of these. Let me grab these two. Let me grab those two, and I'll put them, uh, let's see, I'll put them like right under here, okay? Uh, so what does this say? This says, uh, this says, uh, if you see an incoming GET request, if you see an incoming GET request uh, that has the following pattern, if you see an incoming GET request that has the following uh, URL pattern, slash API, slash session, slash set, slash by something, slash followed by something else. Right? Notice this, this, uh, this, uh, this uh, a colon here, see that? What that allows us to do is to parse out right, values that are being embedded in, a, in the URL. Right, so these map to anything, any string, followed by any string. Right, and, and then so Express will parse out the URL and make available to us these values, name and value here, and pass it to the function set session. Okay? So let's uh, declare here the, the function, uh, or we can use the new uh, set session. Set session. Okay, uh, and it will be passed. We'll be passing the request and the response. Who calls this function? Express calls that function, right? Having parsed out uh, the body, the uh, uh, all, all the all, all the headers and all that. Uh, and now the cookie too, right? The cookie is going to be parsed out. Before, Express was ignoring the cookies. Uh, it wasn't parsing the cookies. But now session, since now we've configured sessions, sessions is keenly uh, interested in that cookie, okay? Um, all right, so it's going to parse all that out, and then it's going to call us, and then let's declare the other one, uh, get session. And this will be request. And response. Okay, everybody okay? All right, for now, let's just let's just play around with a couple things. Uh, if this, uh, I'm gonna just um, I'm gonna use the response to response and make sure that we are in here. Sent back. Um, hello from set session. And this one's gonna respond with hello from get session. Okay, All right. Just to make sure that we're in there. Uh, let's uh, restart the server. Uh, all right, so notice that um, um, we've been starting it. Yesterday we were starting it from the command line, right? We were saying node uh, server JS. We can still do that. Right? We can still do that. But it's much better instead to create a configuration, a running configuration. Right? Uh, let, me, let me remove this one. Uh, let me create a new uh, running configuration, and I'll say this is a node. No, I'm going to use node to run my, my, uh, my file. Uh, I'll call it server. Uh, and so it's going to use node. Uh, the version, right now I only have 10.2.1. 10 .2 uh, and I want to run my server.js. I'm going to say apply and say OK. Uh, now I can run it from here. Right? The, the, the benefit is that not only can I run it, but now I can, I can run it in debug mode, right? and I can put breakpoints. Right? For instance, I, can, I could put a breakpoint right there and check to see that indeed a request is coming in. 
Uh, so here I can either run it or run it in debug mode. So let's run it in debug mode. OK, so it's running debug mode. So if I go back to my uh, browser and I go localhost 3000 and I try to hit this URL over here, right, if I try to hit that, right, so this will be whatever and whatever, uh, it didn't work. Wait, what? Is this running? Uh, debugger, blah, blah, blah. And server, well, let me stop that for a second. Run it? Oh, OK. Uh, set session. Oh, OK, these need to be declared afterwards. Try it again. All right, let me try it. Let me uh, hit it. Refresh. OK, so there it is. So hello from set session. Uh, and if I had one less, and this is get, it says hello from get session. So that's working. I just want to check to see that uh, debug. Let me stop that. We're in debug mode. Uh, hmm, why is it not running in debug mode? All right, I'll take a look at that white. white. That's not working. Uh, anyway, uh, we, we, are, we can run it, and we are indeed retrieving. Uh, we know that we're hitting this uh, or, or this one. Everybody okay? All right. Uh, notice that if I run it, and I, I instead I try to do something else, right, come back, it'll say nothing is mapped to that. Right? The server responds that there's nothing mapped to that. OK, excellent. So we know we're in there. Uh, now what I'd like to show you is that indeed we can uh, we can parse out these values here, right? These, these attributes that are being passed as part embedded in the URL, yes? In, uh, in, in Java, we used to call them uh, path variables, yes? Uh, uh, here, uh, they're parameters, they're path parameters. Okay, the same thing, same idea. Um, all right, so let's take a look at, uh, um, let's uh, try, and, try and grab name and value. So to do that, we can say var, uh, the name, I can parse out the, so what it does is that uh, it, it parses out the URL is coming from where? From the client. The client is passing me that URL, right? So it's part of the request, yes? Uh, so since it's part of the request, uh, Express will parse out the parameters and, and put them, make them available conveniently as part of the request object, right? Because it's coming from the request. It's coming from the client. And it puts them in a, uh, in a map, right, in a, in a JSON map called params as part of the request, yes? Uh, and then and it's, it's, since it's a map, I can, I can use a, uh, the square bracket, right, to retrieve uh, the, the, the object uh, with the name and their map. That it uses these, these, pointy, these uh, colons, right, uh, to declare what keys it's going to use to create the map, right? Uh, so there's the name, and we can also retrieve the value. Right. And what we could do here, instead of sending a, a, a string, we can send back an object saying that the name was n and that the value uh, was v. Now just, so, just so that it echoes back what we send it. Yes? Just to play around with it. Right, so let's restart this. Uh, and let's try this set. So the set, there it is. So not, notice that it's indeed echoing back and with a JSON object with what we sent it, right? Are we okay? All right, excellent. So what do we want to do here? The whole point here uh, that I'm trying, to, uh, I'm trying to make here is that uh, we want to use a session to be able to remember things from one request to the next, right? which is, doesn't come for free in HTTP. Right? HTTP does not remember anything from one request to the next. Right, we have to use libraries such as these right, that, that use the cookie to be able to, uh, to remember things. Uh, all right, so what are we going to do? So how do we do this? Uh, so to do, to, to, um, uh, what, what uh, adding this, this uh, middle tier, the session middle tier, what, uh, what, what that does is that it adds an additional object to the request. 
the request contains lots of really cool things, right? The query string, if there's any you know, question mark, ampersand, all those after the URL, IP address, timestamp, uh, body elements, all, all sorts of stuff, right? Now it's going to add, it's going to have an additional object tied to the request, right? And it has a specific name, just like params has a specific name, right? The new, one, the new object is called request.session. Request.session is now going to be like this map, params. Right, this params map um, uh, is, is, is a read-only parameter, right? It's a read-only map. It exclusively comes from the client, right, as, as, a, as part of the URL. We can't write to it. It makes no sense to be able to write to it, right? It's, it's a, it exclusively comes from the client. But the session, we are going to be able to write to it, you know, store stuff in there, okay, so that if we come back later, if we remember where we put it, that's where it's going to be. All right, that's where it's going to be. Uh, all right, excellent. So let's uh, uh, let's use the session uh, session. Uh, so, so just like we have this params that is read only, now we have session that is also a map. It's also a map, uh, but we can store anything we want in there. We can write to this map. Right? So we can say request sub session sub n and put a value in there. Right? So we're going to take the name, and we're going to use that name as the key into the map where we, what we're going to store. And what are we storing? The value that we just passed on to you. Make sense? All right. Uh, OK. Um, all right, so now we've stored stuff into session. And uh, we can, now we can send back the actual session, see what's in the session. We can send back the entire session. The session meaning the map, the current map that we just generated. So let's do that. Let's uh, restart the server. Uh, and let's try this again. Let's re refresh. Right? Refresh. Uh, and notice that the map uh, has uh, some meta information, some meta information on how to deal with the cookies and you know, how long are they going to, you know, when, do they, when, when do they time out, right? Uh, but additionally, it has the, the data that we put in there, that we put in there, okay? Um, and that will stay there for the at least for the next, you know, 30 minutes, right? Um, uh, so that uh, if I try to, if I, if I go back uh, with a request to the same server from the same browser, it'll be the same cookie, right? You can look at the, you can, you can inspect and see in the network, um, you can see in the network, right, if we refresh um, the query, right, contains as a header, right, it contains a cookie. See this, right? So this cookie uh, is what um, is what uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the session uses, right, to identify us as the same person. Right. Otherwise, this would be always changing. Right. This cookie would be always changing, brand new. Right. So the server would not know that it's still us. Right. But one, once you start using these libraries, it, it understands that it's still us. Um, all right. So, so just like we can set things into the session, we can also retrieve them. We can also retrieve them. Uh, we can, uh, we can um, retrieve from using the same parameter. Right. We can retrieve the value. We can read now. We can now read from the, from the map, we can read the original value that we stored in there, right, using the same name, right? And, and then we can uh, send back the, we can respond, response dot send back the value. OK, so if we restart the server, let's restart. Uh, so let's uh, reset it. Let's reset it. OK, so zip is in there. And that means that in a different in a different location, I can say API session get. Now I'm going to do a get. Notice that it remembers that I had put a zero one eight two seven in there, right? And I can I can I can re, uh, you know uh, send this query, okay? and it'll still remember right from the same session. Right? Again, this is not standard uh, out of the box with Express. Uh, you need to install one of these libraries to support this. 
Uh, after 30 minutes, the, uh, the session will time out of inactivity, right? and, and then no longer will there be uh, a session. Right? The cookie will be considered uh, timed out. Okay? Uh, now, if someone else, right, so for instance, if I, if I use Safari, uh, so it's a, this is a different user, uh, and this user goes to localhost 3000 and does an API set session with a different zip code, right, and, uh, uh, and then comes back and retrieves that, does a get, Notice that it's 43211. It has, it's, different, it's a different session. It's a completely different person right, with a different cookie. Right, this one is still receiving the 01827. See that? But this one is now has 43211. See that? Right, two completely folks, right, two completely different sessions. One had stored one value, and the other one had stored a completely different value. Right, keyed off of the cookie identity. Make sense? All right. All right, so uh, we, know, we know sessions. Um, let's, uh, let's now build on top of this, right, being able to log in, register, uh, handle a profile, things like that. 